Well, let's look at an example of how Le Chatelier's principle applies to a situation. We have an isothermal compression. How will this impact the composition of an equilibrium reaction mixture in the synthesis of ammonia? So you can see we have the equation here, nitrogen, hydrogen, ammonia. All of them are gases. And we said this was going to be an isothermal, so we're gonna stay at the 300 degrees Celsius. K sub C should be 9.6. And if we were working in a one liter reaction vessel, the molarity is measured to be ammonia concentration 3.1, and both the diatomics have a concentration of one molar, then these values are consistent with it being in equilibrium. Let's just double check that. Before the compression, K sub C should be the concentration of the ammonia because that's a product squared because of the two in the stoichiometry, and then over the concentration of nitrogen and the concentration of hydrogen. Concentration of hydrogen has to be cubed because it has a three in the stoichiometry. So if we were to put in the numbers that we've been given, we would get 3.1 and that would be squared, and then this would be one, and then here's one cubed, and okay. When you round back to just two sig figs, that's going to give you 9.6. So yes, we've confirmed what was said here, that it's consistent with it being in equilibrium. Now we're going to do an isothermal compression. That means K sub C is not going to change because we're not changing the temperature. But we have just made it so there's the same number of moles N in half the space. V changed. This did not change, but this has been halved, which means, since it's in the denominator, everything doubled. So let's just write those down. The new values before equilibrium is reached, that's why we're going to be writing Q sub C. NH3, concentration of that, instead of being 3.1, it's going to double. It's going to be 6.2 molar. And for nitrogen and the hydrogen, those concentrations are also both going to double and they're both going to be 2.0 molar. So if we want to talk about comparing K sub C, which we know is 9.6 at this temperature, Q sub C, I'm going to calculate the same way I did before. This is still the calculation, but these are no longer in equilibrium. We're just going to see what the number is. So we would have the 6.2, and that would be squared, and we would have 2, and then we would have 2, and that would be cubed. We get 2.4. Well, that is a lot smaller. It's this for a comparison, which means it will be forcing to the right, to the product side. So how is Q going to increase? This is going to go up. These are going to go down. They both are happening at the same time, right? This being a product, the concentration of ammonia is going to be going up. The only way that it can go up is if the nitrogen and the hydrogen are reacting, their concentration is gonna go down. So both of these are happening at the same time. So it's just going to keep going until it gets to the right amount. How does it impact the composition? This did not ask you to do the entire problem to completion, you know, to figure it out. All they wanted you to say is that this was going up, the products, and the reactants were going down because of the shift. And I just want you to notice that all of that is because there is a change in delta N. Delta N on this side is one plus three is four moles of gas. On this side, there's only two moles of gas. So if you compress it so that the pressure goes up, it's going to shift to the side that has less gas, which is this one. You wouldn't have to do this much uh, completion if you didn't want to. And Le Chatelier's principle lets you predict what direction things are going to happen. Which way is it going to go?